From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Good morning, darling. Hello, hello. We should get married today. Is your name Teddy Davis? What? Who is this? Where's Elise? My name's Johnny Dollar. I'm in her apartment. What? Hey, what? Now listen to me. I'm an insurance investigator, and there have been a couple of murders here. Murders? In Elise's apartment? She's going to need you and all the help she can get to bring her out of it. Mostly you. I've called homicide, and they're on their way, and it might be pretty rough for her. I'll be right over. Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Universal Adjustment Bureau, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Tears of Night matter. It was a long morning, and a lieutenant of police thought I was crazy when he met me in the apartment with two dead men and the hysterical woman. My face was bruised and black and blue from the beating the dead men had handed me the night before. The lieutenant, his name is Brady, had a time getting hold of Hillary Fuchs to back up my story. But Teddy Davis was a different matter. He showed up with a doctor and lawyer. And through their combined efforts, Elise Wendover was removed not to police headquarters, but to a private hospital. It was obvious from powder tests that Mrs. Wendover could not have fired the forty-five, which ended the lives of Feely and Toby. Obvious to me. Lieutenant Brady was a skeptical man. You stay right there and keep your trap shut. I'll figure out what to do with you in a minute. All right, come on, get those baskets out of here. I say, Dollar... Hi, Teddy. How's Mrs. Wendover? Oh, that remains to be seen. She's screaming about that darned curse again. She thinks she had something to do with these murders. Dollar, I I don't know quite how you fit into all this. I do know I'm terribly indebted to you for calling me. Now, what can I do for you? Are you in trouble? I don't think so. Brady's just excited. He can't see where I should be involved, so he suspects me. Of what? Oh, he doesn't know that. He's a policeman, and he suspects everybody. But don't you worry about it. You get back to her. I really do have a good lawyer. He can work on it if you give the word. I can't just walk out of here feeling that you're in jeopardy. Now, what can I do? I thought you were over at the hospital, Mr. Davis. I was. I came back to see what I could do for Mr. Dollar. You can scram now. Watch whom you're talking to, Lieutenant. This man is my friend. Hey, are you kidding? Not a bit. Take it easy, fellas. Take it easy. You said your name's Dollar. Insurance dick. Let's see your buzzer. Okay. Out of Hartford. What's the job? Mrs. Wendover's husband died two years ago. She just got around to filing for benefits last week. We were curious about it. Go on. Well, can't you see, Mrs. Wendover? Let him, huh? As near as I can make out, Mrs. Wendover's overlooked a lot of things since her husband's death. Taxes, bank accounts, whatnot. Hillary Fuchs can tell you that much. This curse business she mumbles about. Well, she lost her husband. Before that, her brother killed in the war, and her father before that. You know, you don't seem to pay much attention. I explained all of it. I'm going to pop you in the cooler if you open your mouth again, Mr. Davis. (laughs) Go on. How about the insurance? Well, all okay. I was ready to leave town last night. As a matter of fact, I'd called for a plane from Fuchs' office. When a man named Scanlon came in, mistook me for Fuchs, and said Sam Costigan wanted to see me. Costigan's got a gambling place on the other side. Yeah, 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 we know about it. Go on. Well, Costigan gave me a necklace, the Tears of Night, said it belonged to Mrs. Wendover. He asked me to bring it back to her, said she'd pawned it at the roulette table. When I got here, Mrs. Wendover was wearing the Tears of Night, or something that looked just like it. Well, I was curious. I looked up the jeweler who had made it, a man named Mortuous. He said I was carrying the real thing. When I left his place, a couple of men from Costigan's place followed me. Who? Those two who were killed, Feely and Toby. They caught up with me outside of this apartment house and tried to shake me down for the necklace. But I'd mailed it to myself at my hotel. So they worked me over and left me there. When I came to earlier this morning, I came up here and found Mrs. Wendover sitting here in a state of shock. The two stiffs in her room. That's it? Yeah, Brady, that's it. How long have you been an insurance dick? Fourteen years. You bonded? Yes. Okay. Are you going to let him go, or aren't you? Shut up. Shut up, and I'll tell you both what I'm up against here. I know Mrs. Wendover couldn't have had anything to do with the killings. I know you, Dollar, couldn't either. Then go out and find who killed those two men. Those two and the other one. Huh? Costigan was gunned down a couple of hours ago. <laughs> Well, 
About three o'clock in the afternoon, Brady released me and Teddy Davis drove me back to my hotel. The clerk at the desk looked at my bandaged face and turned eight shades of white when he handed me my key. I thanked him and told him I'd kept a date with a barracuda. I was feeling kiddish, also a little dizzy and a little tired. I was looking forward to a hot shower and ten hours sleep when I walked in my room. Oh, Dollar, I've been expecting you. Come in, sir, come in. Oh, hello, Mr. Mortuous. Uh, I've been uh, amusing myself with this pocket chess set of yours, Mexican, eh? Sit down, sit down. You've had a hectic night. Your boys were pretty rough, Mr. Mortuous. Philly and uh, Toby are two men of another world, Mr. Dollar, not of our world. Allow me to apologize for their actions. I want more than an apology. They almost beat me to death. And so unnecessary, too. You know, I underestimated you, Mr. Dollar. Such an ingenious method of protecting the tears of night. Why, sir, by the simple expedient of placing it in an envelope and mailing it to yourself from my hotel lobby, you hired as guardians the entire United States Postal Service, not to mention the armed forces. Yeah. Want one of these? No, 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 thanks. I'm one of those faint-hearted persons who cannot abide liquor until after six in the afternoon. What happens now? Do we wait for the mail? We do. Precisely. Then while we're waiting, maybe you'll be kind enough to tell me about the double cross. <laughs> if you can bear my vanity, Mr. Dollar, I, I have invented a new word, triple cross. It has a ring to it, eh? That sounds likely. You see, Mr. Scanlon approached me last week and asked me to duplicate the tears of night Mrs. Wendover had truly pawned at the gaming table. Naturally, I became suspicious. Let me guess what you became suspicious of. Oh, well, it was fairly obvious that Mr. Scanlon was planning to double-cross Mr. Costigan. That is, when the time came to return Mrs. Wendover's necklace, he, Scanlon, I mean, uh, intended to return the bogus piece I made up. And you got into the act. Uh, that is when I first conceived my own plans, yes. Unfortunately, Mr. Costigan learned of the little deceit going on around him, and Mr. Scanlon was forced to shoot him. So Scanlon shot Costigan how about Toby and Feely? Uh, Mr. Scanlon again, abetted by the last of the house of Mortius. You helped him kill them, then planted them, and Elise went over his apartment. Oh, dear, a crude touch, I thought, but it had a purpose. With two cadavers in a living room, she was very unlikely to discuss her bogus necklace with the police. And I doubt very much if she knew whether she was wearing the original or an imitation. Flighty girl. That's the lousiest thing the house of Mortuous ever did. She walked in and found these two there, and the doctor doesn't know whether she'll ever be sane again. Oh, dear, dear, dear. If you had merely returned the necklace to Mrs. Wendover, it would have been a simple thing to effect an exchange, and none of this would have been necessary. Ah, uh, well, then, bygones are bygones. Yeah, sure, I know. You just sit here and wait for the mail. No, 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 no. We wait for the mail. What about your playmate, Scanlon? Why isn't he waiting with you? Scanlon? I'm afraid I'll be sought for a murder of two or three this night. I'm certain the police will find his body before the day is out, but I did need him to help me carry the bodies to Elise Wendover's apartment. Uh, Elise. Uh, tell me something, Mr. Dollar. Does that name Elise bother you as much as it bothers me? Uh, give me a woman with a name like Celeste or Josephine or Roxanne. <laughs> Those, sir, are names for the creatures. But Elise, yeah, twaddle. Where are the police going to find Scanlon? Oh, in my hotel room, which I departed hastily once the room clerk had informed me of your ingenious method for protecting the necklace. I shot him there. Oh, you were cheap, Mr. Mortuous. Cheap, sir? I don't understand. A $10,000 necklace. It's not quite a king's ransom, is it? <laughs> the tears of night are worth closer to $100,000. I'm afraid I misinformed you as to their value. I didn't want you to become suspicious. I suppose you think you'll get away with it. Oh, well, I'm an old man. Attended to a destitute and bankrupt jewelry firm with nothing ahead, a few grim years, and finally a whimpering end. Requiescit in passe. Ah, live. That's what I want to do, live. And this is my opportunity to live like a king. And, young man, I've taken it. Many. Vidi. Vici. Oh, you're crazy. You're crazier than a mosquito in December, Mr. Mortuous. <laughs> They'll grab you before you make the airport. No, I don't think they will. <laughs> I shall leave here and turn the tears of night into cash. With a well-laden purse, I shall guarantee to elude the police over half the world. In two years, maybe three, ah, oh, yes, they'll get me. But I'll have spent the money. And what more could a man ask than a perfect fulfillment of all his wishes, eh? I ask you, sir, as one gentleman to another... What more could a man ask? I... Cautious, Mr. Dollar. I do shoot well. Answer it. Tell them to go away. I'll be 
right beside you. All right. Open it. Uh, one side, Dollar. I got a gun. Scanlon. I thought I'd find you waiting for the mail. You dirty. You didn't do such a good job on me. Caution, Mr. Scanlon. I have a gun to... Uh, last long enough to let you have it. Your loss of blood has made you groggy, Mr. Scanlon. Uh, but still good enough. Uh. Scanlon rolled over and lay still. Watch you was kind of grunted and uh. leaned back against the wall. Uh. He had a pained look on his face. Uh, uh, Mr. Dara. Uh, Mr. Dara. I, I do believe I've been shot. I'll, I'll need a little assistance. I, 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 I can't seem to hold my feet, sir. I can't seem to hold my feet. Uh. I still. <laughs> It was an awkward plan at best, eh? <laughs> Demotuous nil nisi bonum, Dora. Or if your Latin still escapes you, speak well of the dead. Let me have the police. Expense account, well, expense account total, $405.16. Details, Mrs. Wendover will recover. Remarks, I'll stand for the last two days of expense myself. I didn't have any business sticking my nose in the jewelry end of it. But if you make me pay for them, don't ever try to hire me again. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Here's our star to tell you about next week's intriguing story. Next week, the matter of a reasonable doubt. A case of many doubts, and believe me, all of them are most unreasonable. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by John Dawson, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in this week's cast were Virginia Gregg, Victor Perrin, Jack Crucian, Jay Novello, William Conrad, Frank Gerstle, Marvin Miller, and Will Wright. Musical supervision by Amerigo Marino and Carl Fotina. Be sure to join us on Monday night, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, Roy Rowan speaking. Mm-hmm.